You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. So welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today, Sarah Wiles. Uh, she has a book that's a finalist uh, in the High Plains Book Awards. It's called The Arapaho Way, Continuity and Change on the Wind, Wind River Reservation. Did I get that right? Yeah, you okay. did. Well, we'll, um, we'll talk about the book in a minute, but first let's, let's hear a little bit about yourself. Uh, tell us about yourself. My background? Yeah. Um, well, I grew up in Indiana. I have two degrees in anthropology from Indiana University, uh, bachelor's and a master's. And I moved to, um, to the middle of Wyoming, to the Wind River Indian Reservation in 1973. Um, I had a job, got a job as a social worker there and was also working on a master's thesis. So I came here in 1973 and I've been here ever since. Um, I started doing a lot of the research, the background research on the tribes here at the Wind River Reservation and, uh, you know, back in the 1970s. And I just have continued that to, to this day. Um, I also was doing photography when I came here and continued to do that on the reservation. I've had a lot of exhibits. Um, in the 90s uh, and into 2000s, I had quite a few exhibits. And um, so um, at one point, um, you know, some things changed in my life. I, um, uh, all of a sudden my, my kids were out of high school and off to college and, and uh, some other things happened and I had a lot more free time to do things. So I'd always wanted to put a book together I'd even gone to a workshop back in the 90s to figure out how to put a book together with the photos, which didn't help that much. It was fun, but it didn't help that much. But anyway, so about 2004, I just, you know, it was just time to do it. I had time to do it. I had the ability to do it at that point. And so I started doing interviews on the reservation to go with the photographs. I was thinking initially it would be one of those you know, sort of regular photography books with a nice picture and then a short caption. But what happened immediately, the first two interviews I did, um, Arapaho people on the reservation were giving me wonderful family stories. Uh, and uh, so I, I realized right away it wasn't going to be what I thought it was, the, the book. And so I, I worked on that book for four years. And that book was called... Um, Arapaho Journeys, um, and that was published in uh, 2011 by University of Oklahoma Press. And that one, um, as yeah. I recall, that one was the uh, a winner at the Paul Plains Book Awards uh, that year. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, after that book was published, I had a lot of material left over from the first book. Uh, and um, I thought, well, what am I going to do? And then I went back and revisited a lot of the material from the first book and re re revisited all that, re rewrote all that, um, and then just started taking some some new photographs, first of, of Dickie and then later of other events. I spent a whole summer going to rodeos, ropings, and associated horse events, races on the reservation and came up with some real interesting material on the Indian relay races that are now very popular and um, the history of one family's involvement in horse racing over a century. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, several things here and, and just going back to the book. Um, for one thing, it's, it's a little unusual to find a, a, a book that would go into the art photography category that is would be handled by uh, University Press, particularly uh, mm -hmm. a powerful one like uh, University of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that uh, you have a very unusual combination <laughs> of talents. Yes, yeah. And it's, yeah I, I don't think there's a lot of people kind of doing what I'm doing, which is, you know, using photos and and historic photos too. 
um, and interviews, plus doing um, some archival research to yes. kind of put everything together and to form a book. Um, I'm not sure it, the book fits into any specific category. I don't think of it primarily as a photography book anymore. I started, I, that's where I started, but it, you know, the books are something different. So it's not primarily a photography book. So I'm, I'm honored that it, it, it fit into one of your categories for the High Plains Awards. Yeah, that's to fit into a category, but <laughs> it's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the combination of um, the stories and, and, and your, your eye and ear as uh, training in, as an anthropologist and, and experience as a social worker mm -hmm. and collecting, getting to know people over decades Mm -hmm. Like their stories, mm -hmm. I think makes this really stand out. Yeah. And I was thinking too about, um, you know, there's a woman in Montana who uh, took photographs out here in the 1910s. And, uh, oh my gosh, I'm just blocking on her name. It's ridiculous. Evelyn Cameron. Mm -hmm. And she was up around uh, uh, Terry, Montana. Mm -hmm. And she took amazing photographs, which everybody looked at and said, oh, these are nice. And then it came out that she kept daily diaries. And it was like, oh, they're diaries. Wow. <laughs> Suddenly the book is, is enormously significant because mm -hmm. the stories that attach. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's maybe you know, where, where you are with your, your book. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... You know, I started out as a social worker, and that gave me an entree into the community. Um, I worked primarily with the senior citizens programs that were starting to come in back in under the OEO programs of the 1970s, ancient history now. Um, so I worked, I worked with that, and I got to know a lot of the elders, and I got to know heads of families, and that's sort of where I stayed for for these years. I have. Uh, spent a lot of time with the elders. I've also been officially adopted into one family and sort of semi-officially adopted into several other families. <laughs> and uh, um, I spend, there's some families and they're, you know, that I still spend a lot of time with if I'm not quarantined, <laughs> like we all are. Yeah, and I miss everybody, I really miss. That's been the hardest part about this. COVID thing for me is um, staying away <laughs> from people. You know, the way I work is um, I'll do, you know, the, the initial interviews and the historic uh, and looking at some of the historic information um, and start to write. And everything I write, I take out to whoever I'm writing about or the family of, of that person and go over it in detail. And did I get this right? Um, should I say it this way? Should I say it that way? Um, so they're not surprised when the book, book comes up because they've already seen everything that's going to be written about them. And also, um, I usually do the initial selection of photographs and then I say, okay, I can't decide between these two, which one would you, you know, that kind of a refinement from the point of view of the Indian families. I sure appreciate the time you've taken with us today. This, is, uh, this has been great. It's been a delight to meet you. It's, it's been fun. I really enjoy talking to you. Well, thanks again. You bet. You bet. Good talking to you, Mark. And good talking to you, sir. Well, I hope our paths cross yeah. again. Okay. <laughs> okay. So long. Okay, so long. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.